It is November 9th, 2021. I'm coming to you from California. My name is Laura and I am the owner and dyer and designer of Back Porch Fiber Co. Um, this is blog number one and or podcast number one. Um, so I just really wanted to come on and share with you guys what I'm making. Um, there could be some dye content in future episodes. I don't have any to share right now, but um, maybe in future episodes. But uh, yeah, I wanted to share my works in progress with you guys, maybe some stash acquisition. Um, so I have a couple finished objects to share with you guys, and then just what is gonna jump on my needles next, plans that I have for future knitting. So um, grab your favorite beverage and um, I'll see you guys back here in just a minute. So today I am drinking some tea because I've already had my coffee for today and I really try to just have one cup of coffee a day. But um, I am having this orange clove from Yogi. It is a seasonal tea, so it's the first time that I'm trying it. I'm gonna let that um, tea bag steep a little bit and then we'll give it a little try. So, um, that there. So let me first um, go over some works in progress with you guys. So so I absolutely love to keep my projects in these um, African Volga baskets. I have so many baskets. Um, this is by far like my favorite though. It's just this little mini tote. Um, it holds so much and I like that I can put it down like by my feet in the car um, when I'm knitting on the road, which for some reason I happen to do a lot, do that a lot. Um, but what I'm working on right now, and I'll put a picture in because it, this kind of looks a little wonky because it still needs to be blocked, but this was Knit Picks free um, pattern from last week's patterns for the 12 weeks of Christmas that they do every year and it is it'll be a pillow so I'm more than halfway done but it's uh, a mountain theme so I'm doing this for my daughter um, she kind of has like this boho feel for her house and I just thought a handmade gift for Christmas would be great um, but it will fold in half like this but if you can see like the mountain motif. Um, and I think that this is, the pattern is like California mountains or it was inspired by the California mountains. I'll put a picture of the pattern, um, the picture from the pattern. I'll insert that here. But um, yeah, so I'm almost done. It'll have a button edge so that you can just put a, um, a pillow form inside. And ironically, I'm using, I decided to go, um, I'll find the tag for that in just a minute, but I just wanted to get some inexpensive yarn because um, I figure she'll, I mean, it's, it's a throw pillow, so I don't need to do, you know, indie dyed yarn or super expensive yarn. But, um, you know, I just went to my local craft store and picked out this brand of yarn. And it's actually surprisingly like enjoyable to knit with. I wasn't sure because it does have a lot of acrylic in there, but it's really great. All right, so this is, it's a Lion Brand Yarn Wool Ease. Um, it's 85 grams, 197 yards, and um, it's 80% acrylic, 20% wool. So like I said, it does have a lot of acrylic in there, but um, that's the yarn. So um, I really like it though. It's actually great. I would like to do maybe another pillow for her as well and maybe like a boho mauve kind of color. Um, and I think that the two of those would look great. But she is really into hiking in the mountains and so I just thought that um, that would be a great gift for her for Christmas. So um, we'll set that guy aside there. Time to try this tea. That's really good. It has a lot of the orange notes in there, so you can definitely taste the orange, and the clove is just very mild, but it 
kind of just re reminds me of like fall and Christmas time and winter. Like it's raining right now in California, which it doesn't happen often, but it is raining today. And so it's kind of nice to have my nice warm cup of tea. But um, anyway, so that's the project that I am working on the most right now. Kind of everything else has kind of gone by the wayside, but that is my number one project right now. So the other project um, that I am working on, and this is from a homespun house yarn in her gingerbread house colorway. Um, I'm almost done. It's a pattern that I'm designing on my own. It's a very simple pattern. Um, if I charge for it, it won't be very much just because it is such a simple pattern, but it's a one by one rib. And then I just carried that ribbing along the outside of the foot and I did a green heel. I think I just found this green in my stash and I think it's from um, Hugh Loco's fall, like her very first fall collection that she had. And I just happened to have a little bit in my stash and it worked out perfectly. I probably had like 10 different colors all spread out trying to figure out what color to do um, but my son chose this one and then my friend um, Annie from Hadley Homemaking she also picked the same one so that's a no-brainer then um, but yeah so I'm working on the toe on this one I'm using these um, chow goo bamboo needles I've never used these bamboo needles before and I love them they're phenomenal there I was kind of worried that like my yarn would not slip off um, easily on the needle because I feel like I knit in a tighter gauge and so I like the chow goo metal needles because they just um, they float very easily off the needle to the yarn and so I was a little concerned with that when I started using these bamboo ones but I really like them and it just helps to kind of mix things up with my hands but Here's the, um, that's the, just the little ribbed pattern there. And like I said, this is a homespun house, gingerbread house yarn. I'm not sure if she's carrying it again this year, um, but uh, I, did, I got this a couple years ago and just really have been wanting to cast it on. And I don't know, like once Christmas passes then you kind of get out of that mode. But um, yeah, and then I have the other the right side so there there will be a left and a right but then I have the other one here so the stripes will go down on the right side on the right foot and on the left side for the left foot but so I have those down this one is just ready for the heel so those are kind of the two main projects that I am working on but um, sitting up here in another Volga basket I have been loving, loving this, um, this project. This is the Woodford's cardigan. Um, I am on the skirt section of it here. Um, but this is what it looks like here. And then it has the skirt on the bottom. So it's an all over textured um, like a ribbed textured pattern. Um, I love it. Like I love the detail of this braid up here that will just sit like on the tops of my shoulders. I'll again, I'll insert a picture here of the of a finished Woodford's. But um, this project, I love the yarn. It's a merino hemp yarn that I dyed myself, um, and it's not something that I think I'm going to carry in the shop currently. I may in the future. But from what I understand with the hemp is that it gets, it'll get softer the more you use it, the more you wash it, etc. So, um, like it already feels very plump and um, there is a softness to it. And then I just think that once I wash it, it'll just continue to get softer and softer. But I just did like this soft gray um, color. Oh, and look at this um, new progress keeper that I have in this shop. Um, so these are, uh, this is the first time that I've done the lever back progress keepers. And I'm kind of hemmed and hawed about it, like thinking, oh, is it really gonna be better? But it's a game changer, I tell you, like 
it's so easy to take on and off um, without having to fiddle with the little lobster clasps. I really, really like these a lot. So check those out, they're in my shop um, and they come with some coordinating um, stitch markers as well. So you get the progress keeper and the stitch markers and there's a few different bead options in there for you guys too. But um, my fingers are itching to get back to this, but I really wanna finish that pillow for my daughter. So this is just gonna sit nicely in its cute little basket. And I do sell these, this one in the shop. Um, they're all different colors when you purchase them, but um, I do have these in the shop and the mini totes in the shop as well. So there are those. And I just love the Bolga baskets. They're phenomenal. So. Um, another project that I am working on, I have so I, feel, I do feel like I have a lot of whips going on. I have design stuff going on. I have um, ongoing scrappy blankets that I do. So this one here is an ongoing scrappy blanket. Um, I saw something like this and then just kind of decided to do my own version. So I don't know how similar it is to the pattern that's out there, um, but I just kind of figure things out, but this is my scrap blanket here. Um, what I love about this is that like with the mitered square blanket, you need five grams, right? Like you need about five grams for every square, but with this, you could do more, you could do less. I mean, you'll see on here, like there's sections like this here, this section, like, there are two sections here that are very small. I didn't have a whole lot of yarn, but I didn't want to waste the yarn. So, I mean, that's probably like two grams or so of the yarn. Um, so I'll just kind of mix those in and then make sure that the lines um, just don't overlap. But yeah, so even like this little guy here, I just will kind of use whatever I want. And that's the beauty of this. Like you don't have to have just five grams and then you can have whatever you want, but I'm not quite sure how big I will want this yet, but I love this blanket. I have other scrap blankets and they're just a joy to knit on. So let's move on. Um, I'll share some of my other scrappy projects for you guys uh, for the next podcast, but let's go ahead and move on to a couple finished objects. Okay, look at how cute this mug is, right? Hey there, pretty lady. I got this for one of my daughters last year because all the time she will come up to me and wrap her arm around me and just say, hey there, pretty lady. And like it's, just, it's kind of just our thing to one another. And so when I saw this, I had to get it for her. So whenever now I use it for like, she's just not here right now. So whenever I use it, I always think of her and it's just kind of like this little warm hug. So I love it. Okay, so I did, um, Nitty Bitty Sisters had a beanie knit along for the month of October because um, I think it's Yvonne's birthday is in October. And so um, I was kind of itching to get a fast project done because I had the, or I have the, the Woodford's cardigan that I'm working on. And so I just kind of wanted something quick to work on. And so I rummaged through my stash and I um, found this this pattern. Um, it's from All About Amy. Um, I'll put the name of the pattern down here because I just cannot remember for the life of me, but I just got into my stash, found um, some yarn, and the color work was just enough for me. I kind of wanted something that, while it was mindless at the same time, it captured my attention a little bit more. You know, there are different kinds of knitting projects. There are those times when you just really appreciate the stock net and just the continuity of that and my hands. And then there are times where you just want something a little bit more challenging. Um, and that's what this is bringing. The Woodfords is also bringing that. Um, the pillow is uh, that like you're following a chart on that. And so that takes a little bit more brain power, but just, at different times of the day, different moods, I'm just in the mood for different things and my hands crave different needle sizes, different yarn textures. Anybody else get like that or just me? Like I, maybe it's 
maybe it's just me, but, or maybe it's all of us knitters. <laughs> but anyway, so I did finish this hat for the knit along. Um, I love, love this hat is great. It was a really fun one and quick. I love hats cause they're so quick to knit. And I like the, like, this is a DK yarn. I want to say the main yarn is from, um, playful day, uh, fibers. So, but it's something that I bought quite a while ago. All right, another finished object is a sweater. This is a free pattern. I'll put the pattern name below. Um, it's a cropped sweater. I still need to block it and I still need to weave in the ends, but I'm counting it done because it's kind of done. And I pretty much ran out of yarn for this project as well. So I had to make the sleeves a little bit shorter, but it actually worked out just fine because um, I think I was inadvertently knitting them too long anyways. So I think it's really great. And I think once I block it, I'm hoping that it goes down a little bit farther. I don't typically wear crop tops, but um, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to try it. But the, this is Yoth um, and their DK weight. Uh, Beetroot, I believe is the colorway for this. Um, but what I loved about this sweater is the simple details of um, like right here in the raglan um, increases here. It's a top down sweater cropped, but the simpleness of this right here, I just love it. I really, really love this. And I think I may actually um, do a full length version of this. Um, with the raglan increases kind of make it a little bit of my own but take the general ideas and concepts of this sweater and do a striped version um i'll probably do like a fingering held double so it'll be more of like a worsted weight um so i'll just have to play around with gauge on that but you know i really encourage you guys like don't feel like you ever have to fully stick with a pattern um i change things up all the time you know if a sock pattern says um, to do a two by two ribbing for your cuff, but you really like the way that a one by one looks, do the one by one. Like it, it's really okay to switch things around and um, just kind of make things your own. You know, you could change um, yarn size, you could change needle size, just make it your own. You know, it's, it, there's nothing, every pattern came from somebody else's idea and there is no shame in changing that up if you have an idea that you like to switch that around with you know it's that's the beauty of handmade items is that you can switch things around so so i will be blocking or weaving this and then blocking in the ends or let's try that again <laughs> i will be weaving in my ends and blocking this here soon because the weather has changed here in california and it is getting quite chilly so I'm excited to be able to wear that. The color is perfect. I feel like I'll probably even wear it for Christmas, but anyways. Okay, we are gonna move on to stash acquisitions. All right, so stash acquisitions. And I, so I dye yarn, but I still love to buy other people's yarn. I still like to try other, other people's yarn. Um, and most of my stash acquisitions came from a very good knitting friend of mine who lives in Houston. I just mentioned her, Annie from Hadley Homemaking. Um, she has a podcast as well. I highly recommend that you go check her out. Make sure you just bring a warm drink because like what I did this morning, I loved it. So I just sat down had my knitting, watched my podcast, and that was like my quiet morning time this morning. And knowing that she's my friend, that I know her personally, it just makes me feel like I am there with her when we're still so many miles apart. As I said, she lives in Houston. So um, yeah, I uh, really, really enjoy her podcast. And it's just like you're sitting down talking with a girlfriend and knitting together. So highly recommend that. So you should go check her out. Um, okay, acquisitions. So, as I mentioned, my friend Annie, she was de stashing and I picked up some of her stuff. I'm like, hey, before you put all that stuff out there on the web for other people, let me see what you got. So, 
on my mitered square blanket there is a square that I look at all the time it's a self-striping yarn I look at it all the time and I just think oh I love these colors I love these colors so when I saw this in her de-stashed I immediately knew I wanted it I cannot remember the maker of this I want to say maybe nomad yarns but um like look at that self-striped goodness there Oh, I love this and I, I literally like I can pick out that square on my mitered square blanket all the time So she was getting rid of these for whatever reason. She just couldn't maybe just had something else in mind, but Super excited to acquire this yarn really excited about that All right, then another amazing one that she was getting rid of is from Hue Loco it is her Eclipse colorway, and she may even still be making this one, but it's just, these are all sock weight yarns, because um, I do make a lot of socks, but look at that one there. All right, next. This one does not have a tag, but look at how beautiful that is. Love it. These will all probably be socks, honestly. Okay, this one here is um, Old Wire Road. I think she changed her name. I can't remember. Um, I'm not even sure she may be dying yarn currently or not. I, she's kind of gone on and off, um, which is so great about a yarn dyeing business because you can do that. You know, you can just make it fit your life. But like, I don't know. I mean, this is just such a beautiful color. I just love it. It's so pretty to me. Again, these will all be socks. So this is a, uh, um, this next one is a homespun house um, in Goblin Dance. I'm trying to fit that little guy back in there, but look at that. I just kind of wanted to get a variety of new yarns. So this is a, hue, um, or a homespun house again, and it is Lucid Dream in her soft sock. I'm so excited to have these, you guys, so excited. And then look at how fun this one is. She dyed this one um, using avocados. And I just love like the tone of this. I love that she made it. So um, she just gave me this one because I liked it so much. But so that's that for that yarn acquisitions. And then I splurged, I usually get a self-striping yarn for an advent, so this one here is from Freckled Whimsy. I actually, when I first got it, I thought, hmm, maybe I should just start November 1st and because I'll have other stuff to do in December, so. But I'm being good, I'm holding off even though I can convince myself in a thousand different ways why I should open it and start it. I'm gonna be good. So, that's that one there. Um, so that's it for stash acquisitions. I have um, some other yarn. I think I mentioned doing a striped yarn in my um, in that free pattern um, with the raglan increases that I really like that I was just showing in the beetroot. And um, I'm actually going to use my fall color palette for that. I think I may just pair it with like a bare yarn and. Um, alternate like do a, a stripe of color and then the bare yarn stripe of color bare yarn etc all the way down um, so that is a future uh, project that I'd like to do um, another future project would be these striped socks um, and then let's see what else do I have in my brain going on um, I would love to do a color work hat, and in that one I'm gonna use, um, I have a sport weight sock set uh, that I have in the shop currently, and um, I found a beautiful color work hat, I'll post a picture of it here, um, that I would like to cast on here quickly. Um, you know, sometimes my hands just crave that color work, I don't do it a lot, but Sometimes I just want that color work. So um, yeah, so there's those two projects. And then another one that I'm really excited about, uh, I think it might be some Christmas presents for people, I'm not totally sure yet, is um, 
from Heidi and Lana. She has some coasters that were part of her Huga box last year. Um, and I bought the pattern and I'm gonna just use some scrap yarn that I have laying around. Um, you know, I may even use, I have some of this color here left over still. So I may even just use that. And I believe that the pattern calls for DK weight yarn, but the beauty of it is like, if you have worsted weight yarn, they're gonna just be a little bit bigger. Um, and it's fine, like go for it, you know? So, um, but I feel like these coasters have kind of a boho feel to them. Um, I have some people in mind that I would really like to make them for. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, so, well, this was um, a lot of fun. Um, I'm hoping to do this on a constant basis. I really like the idea of just documenting my crafting and knitting adventures right now. Um, I don't know how much time I'll get with kids at home and we homeschool. Um, we've been homeschooling for a long time, so you know my, my time is limited, but my son happens to be at a class today, so I have a little bit of time to come home in a quiet house. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of see where this goes. I'm just having a lot of fun documenting everything and looking back at all the projects that I've been working on these last this last month or so. So hopefully I can give you guys an update in another few weeks and we'll see you guys next time. Check out my Instagram page. Um, you can find me there on um, back porch, the Back Porch Fiber Co and um, same thing on Etsy as well. And there's a link on my Instagram account uh, for my Etsy shop. It's just Back Porch Fiber Co. Um, leave a comment below if you have any questions and I'll put all the info that I shared with you guys down in the notes. Happy knitting, happy crafting adventures, and we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.